Let's have a look at these 10 axioms. I'm going to present them to you in a different order from the way the book presents them. Uh, I'm going to group them by uh, their uh, common theme, if you want, but their purpose that they're trying to achieve. Okay. So we're going to start from two axioms which are called the closure axioms. And we're going to see later on that these axioms are going to be very, very important and very useful and efficient. Uh, in fact, we're going to see later on that in some situations, these are the only axioms that we need to check. And notice that we're uh, down from 10 to 2. But again, uh, we're, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. We do need to check that all 10 of them are satisfied. But in some situation, we'll see that these two are the only ones that we really need to because the other eight come automatically. All right, so let's see. What are these two closure axioms? And then I'll tell you later why they're called closure, closure axioms. Okay? The first axiom is that if I take two vectors that are in this vector space and I add them up according to my addition operation, then I still end up with something which is in, in the same set. Okay, So in other words, I put two things together, I come up with something else which is still in the same set. The second one is similar to it. If I pick a vector in my uh, set and I pick a scalar, then once I put them together, then the product, the scalar product, also has to be in my uh, vector space. So what we're saying with these two axioms is that we expect these operations to never create an object which is outside of V. Okay? So if you think of this big uh, ellipse as the set of all objects I'm considering, and if, it, if I pick two of them uh, in this set, and I add them up according to my operation, I don't want to go outside of that set V. What I want to do is I want to make sure that my operation leads me still to another object with, which is within that set. Same idea for the scalar product. Okay? Once I take a vector and I multiply by a scalar, uh, according to my multiplication, I have to come up with something else which is in there. And that's why these are called the closure axiom. We want to make sure that our set is closed, that it's not open to the possibility of us taking two elements and obtaining something which is outside of it. Okay? So these are the first two axioms. The next, set, the next set of axioms comes from uh, algebra. Okay, So basically what we're trying to do, and I'm going to repeat this at the end of this slide, is that we want to maintain certain algebraic properties that we like about usual vectors. So for instance, the first of these axioms is what we call the commutativity of addition. So when I am adding two vectors, I get the same thing no matter which order I'm, up, I'm adding them on. So in other words, I don't want to worry about the order in which I'm adding two vectors, whatever addition means. Now, notice that I'm using this vector notation, but what I'm saying is the usual uh, property of, uh, of vector addition that we called commutativity from the beginning. Except that again, in the general case that we're considering, addition may not be the regular addition that we're used to, maybe some strange operation. And we're going to see some examples of that. And so um, I still want my, my commutativity to be there. The second axiom is what uh, ref will reflect the associativity of addition. So if I have three vectors and I want to add them up, I want to do it in such a way that it doesn't matter which two I add first. So I can add u and w first and then add v to them to the sum. Or I can add v and u first and then add w to that sum. I should end up with the same thing. Again, this is uh, similar to the regular property we're familiar with from regular algebra that has to do also with associativity, except it's written in the more general sense. The third axiom is uh, what I would call scalar distributivity. And that looks like this. So if I have a scalar and I'm multiplying that by the sum of two vectors, I should get the same thing as if I take the scalar and multiply by the first vector, take that same scalar, multiply by the second vector, and then add up the two vectors I obtain. Now, you may be lost in this maze of strange additions and multiplications. But what you want to notice is that this property is really the same as regular distribu distributivity, the foiling thing that we are uh, used to. Okay? So if I take a scalar and multiply by a sum of two things, that's the same thing as multiplying by each of them and then adding them up. Again, the only difference is that uh, the addition and the multiplication that we're using may not be are the usual ones, and therefore we want to maintain that general notation. 
you may want to sort of reflect a little bit of this notation and make sure you understand what it means um, beyond the, the strange um, use of the symbols. The next vector is what I would call the vector distributivity. So again, we're trying to look at the distributivity uh, property of multiplication versus addition, but this time we're going to do it with respect to the vectors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, if I have a, a sum of two scalars and I'm multiplying that by a vector, that distributes with respect to the vector. In other words, I can multiply A by V, B by V, and then add them up. Okay. So this is actually the same as the familiar formula that I can write this way, a plus b times v is av plus bv. Notice that in this case, the a plus b I'm using inside the bracket on the left hand side is the usual one. Because remember, a and b are scalars, regular numbers. And so when I say a plus b, I do mean the usual a plus b. So I don't need any strange symbols. Okay? But the rest of it do require, again, the, uh, whatever operations are uh, involved in the particular vector space I'm using. The last algebra axiom is what I would call the scalar associativity. Okay, and what that means is that if I multiply a times the already multiplied b times v, that is the same thing as multiplying a and b together in the usual way. So again, notice no strange symbols there, and then multiply that um, times v. Um, by using the regular definition of the operation in the vector space. Again, in regular notation, this would look like a times bv is the same thing as ab times v. Oh, and by the way, um, once we know what the scalar uh, multiplication and addition are in a specific vector space, quite often we're going to drop those strange pluses and minuses uh, in a circle and just use the regular notation for multiplication and addition. So you'll have to bear with these operations just until we get the basic done. Uh, but do remember that in some cases those are not the usual addition and multiplication. Okay? So why do we want these ones? Why do we want these axioms? Well, <laughs> quite simply because they're nice properties. Okay, uh, These are properties that have served us well in order to develop a good algebra. These are properties that apply in a lot of the situations in which we do want to um, use vector spaces uh, and we want to consider vectors um, or sets of objects as vectors and so on. So we're going to demand that they are there. There are still three axioms to go. Let us see what they are and why I put them together.